When you see a bus, what do you think of? Does it bring you back to your childhood days to the bus you took on your way to school? Or maybe it brings you back to your first job, where you used to walk around the corner from your tiny apartment to the city bus stop on your morning commute. Maybe a bus means nothing to you, and that's okay. But maybe, just maybe, a bus means something so much more. This is a story of struggle, of hope, of pain and life lessons. But more importantly, this is the story of how we turned this old fire crew bus into a home. The dream began like any other. I turned to Dan on a chilly January night and said, what if we bought a van and traveled the country in it? And he responded, okay. One month later, we were officially owners of a brand new high top van that we found dirt cheap on auction. We fixed up the van with scraps of wood we scrounged up around the city, dubbed our majestic camper Queen Bess, and hit the open road. On the weekends, at least. On long drives home, we would always wonder, how could we stay out there for longer? We thought about what it would take for us to live on the road full time, and we came up with our must-haves for long-term living. We just talked about ground clearance, we talked about space, we talked about like height. Enter the shuttle bus. This will be our home one day. Doesn't look like much right now, but gotta start somewhere. It's a 2003 E450, it's a turtle top odyssey. It's about 26 feet long. It's got a luggage compartment in the rear. Pretty tall, ton of windows. Overall, a pretty good base to start. Did we mention that we also got a puppy about one week after purchasing the shuttle bus? And if you can imagine, the puppy took up all of our time. And the bus project got put on pause for a little bit. Then one day, we finally got around to the shuttle bus project. But we had a lot working against us in trying to build out a shuttle bus. We didn't have a good space to park it or work on it. We were deep in the throes of raising a very high maintenance puppy, and it was the height of the pandemic and the cost of materials were insanely high. It is February 27th. We got some good demo done today however when we started the bus to move it um had some hiccups and not starting properly and blowing white smoke so not looking good it's definitely disappointing we haven't put too much work into it yet so that's good daniel's gonna do some research see if there's any potential fixes he can do on his own probably call a mobile mechanic trying to keep spirits up but we're not going to give up this is not us giving up we are just hitting a roadblock and we are going to keep going and we are going to follow the stream that we've had since early 2019 um yeah just needed to give a little update on where we're at so that we can look back on this and be like you know, we did hit some road bumps, but one day I bet we'll be watching this from a national park or some, you know, beautiful backyard view. Just like thinking about how wonderful it is to live the life that we chose. And I know that we will get there one day. And the day we took the bus to the scrapyard was simultaneously the best and worst day of our lives. But life has a funny way of working out sometimes. And one week later, we stumbled across an offer we couldn't refuse. 27 seconds. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 17. OK. 
happened for the last second. Eleven. Seven. Four. Oh my god! Wait! One. Did we get it? Did we get it? I think we, we just... Get it? Five grand. <laughs> Closing in progress. We hopped in our trusty gal Bess and drove over 800 miles to pick up our new rig sight unseen and not even knowing if the truck would make it five miles down the road. Here is the new rig. All its glory. Then we had the task of driving this baby home and this journey home was not easy. Almost immediately, we had an issue with the radiator fluid that Dan troubleshooted. The throttle got stuck and wouldn't shift into gear as we pulled into a rest stop at one point. We drove over steep mountain passes, sprinkled in snow, and the dashboard didn't light up, making it nearly impossible to drive at night. But we kept driving, one mile after the other, all the way home. It is official. The bus has made it to Portland made it into its fucking storage spot. spot and we could not we can like take a chill pill for a sec we did it baby I'm really shocked and that it all worked out but we worked hard <laughs> to do this we busted our asses to do this so um, we're very excited for this bus life dream but man this is not an easy dream to live out let me tell you then the bus sat in its parking spot for months and we spent that time prepping and planning just trying to get the bin of the truck inspected it is april 21st and we're slowly making strides we sourced materials trying to get them cheaply from craigslist i believe we paid about 160 for each of these bought them new from somebody off craigslist who had bought a pallet of them for their home we hunted all over facebook marketplace we even got lucky and found items for free like our previously dingy cabinets and countertop that we literally found on the side of the road we spent a couple grand buying batteries direct from China that we were truly shocked to see arrive at our doorstep four months later. We got our batteries, we got our batteries. Yeah. We just talked about it yesterday or the other day that we're like, That's well, I guess thing. in 10 days we'll have to ask for a refund and maybe start over. <laughs> There was also a brief period where we thought the engine ran too hot and we thought we might have had to replace the whole thing. But it turns out that was just another fluke with our dashboard issues. We just got a text from Dan saying no overheating. We have been trying to get the RV over to our house for a while. And for the record, we rent half of a duplex. We share half of a driveway. We are going to try to put the truck in the driveway, but we haven't for many months because we've been just debating how we want to handle the build while we're renting. I'm really nervous. I want to get started on this build. It has been a long time coming and we are eager. So I'm really hopeful that we can get the truck over here. So we got the truck to the house and we truly had no clue what we were doing or what was in store for us. We've barely done anything. Jen's already <laughs> She's hit herself a few times, fallen down a couple we, times. We have one protective arm device. already broken one tool. Look at that first seat out. We spent over a month demoing the dang thing. Dan spent weeks grinding out the graded window covers and one of the massive upper shelves. About 20 minutes of grinding later, we got one to rip it off. We're like an hour later. Got one rivet all the way up. We got the front done as well. So. 
Only thing holding this up is these two. I'm worried. This thing's gotta weigh like at least 50, 100 pounds. I guess it's time to start grinding. It felt like one of the metal seats was just permanently bolted into the bus, but also bolted to nothing at all at the same time. That last seat is bolted somewhere else that we need to uh, figure out. We're one half closer. We have literally half of the bus diamond plate removed at this point. So we got one door off, one more door to go. We sanded sanded some more, and then did more sanding of the old walls. I am back to my favorite new hobby, sanding. We cleaned away over 20 years of grime and dirt. This was a beast of a project we truly couldn't fathom until we started. It is a four week bus build update. What's your reviews on building a bus so far? <laughs> Uh, demo is, you know, definitely harder than people think. I think having all the right tools definitely makes a big difference. I'm pretty much really exhausted and it's really cool to see how far we've come. Maybe doesn't look like a lot right now, but the amount of effort it took to get it to look like this was crazy. And then one day I was like, let's paint the bus. And Dan was like, have fun with that. And I was like, how hard can it be? Turns out really hard. So I'm using a hand sander. <laughs> it's definitely taking all the strength in me to do this. I have been sanding all day, Just all day. There was a moment that I went to the hardware store to get more sandpaper. I must seem like an idiot for not being sand like this. We rented this cool sandy thingamajiggy. We're painting today! <laughs> we already painted one of the sides um, a couple days ago, which was really stressful. You know, our goal for this paint job is to just look good enough. Um, we're not trying to have a professional, I mean, it'd be great if it looked professional, but basically the rain is coming in four days. And more or less every project followed this chaotic and stressful pattern. We're not experts though, so <laughs> we'll see if this works. So we finished the demo, we painted the exterior, we restored the interior. Prepping phase is going sort of well. We de-rusted bits and bobs. We added spray foam here and there. We put a Max Air fan in our exit hatch. Right. Look at it. We installed wall panels. We drywalled the seams. Daniel got all the bathroom wall panels up. Look at how good that looks. That's gonna be the composting toilet. Then right across from that, we haven't really made progress here yet, but this will be the shower. That is an update. We're probably about two months into the build right now. And then we applied a mold and mildew resistant primer and white paint. Here is the finished wall. You can still see the seams a little, but the further I do that, the less you can see it. It really felt like we were on a roll with this project. We had just sold our van for a hefty buck. We were really starting to see our tiny home's progress from a stale metal box to a warm and loving home. And suddenly we hit a wall. When the winters hit in Portland, everything feels like a chore. And when you don't have a proper workshop to build things in, building a truck really feels like a chore. Oh. Ah, <laughs> okay, back at painting today, and it's a little cold, so hot. It's freezing out, but also the last sunny day for a while. 
we were struggling to prioritize projects. The window trim is coming along, definitely requiring patience for each window and lots of clamping and wood glue. <laughs> the thing I'm most worried about is like when we get to the install, you know? Nothing goes according to plan. I can't handle this. Ah! It fell on me. Ah! I, I'm so having a hard time. We were working in extremely cold temperatures where curing times were sometimes taking weeks. I've been trying to close up this seam, so I've been letting this cure for about 24 hours. I'm just gonna get this finished, and then we can put it in the shed to cure for a little bit, for like a week or so, where things are curing very slowly because it's like 20 degrees in Oregon. It's really cold. We were building things we had no experience ever building. And we're gonna do one more check. Pretty much spot on. Here is the new and improved fit. Definitely one of those ones that you don't wanna mess up. Well, crap. Oh, don't say that. Come on, man. Did the clamps move or something? Oh. My. God. Well, so we may have cut it wrong. We had to learn all new skills and ways of thinking. All right, another problem. We didn't really count for this bar in here. I have redone these like four or five times. I need to document where I'm at with the sewing and the update is that it's a mess. We're just, we're just working through some stuff right now. For someone whose previous experience level was not realizing I needed to put the thread through the needle in the sewing machine, I'm pretty proud of this. I feel like I did a great job. And we were trying to stay within a very limited budget. So we're gonna try flex paste. It was probably like seven to ten dollars for that. So I may need to get two more and that is not the most budget-friendly product. It really seems like something's leaking. This is a very frustrating shower pan to put in. Feeling very defeated on this shower pan. A little, little bit of a pooling stitch going on. That's what happens when you custom make your own shower drain pan. We'll say it once and we'll say it again. Don't make your own shower pan. It really felt like we were too deep into a project that we had no business being in. Kind of just winging it, as with everything. Then, there was this one week we went to a friend's wedding in Hawaii, and holy moly, we needed that time to recharge. and we came back refreshed and ready to finish this dang bus. We've been in Hawaii for the past week, so now it's back to work. I tried my hand at poor painting our countertop. What did I have to lose? We literally got this off the side of the street. And yes, I did sprinkle glitter into our countertop and no, I'm not sorry about it. All of a sudden, we were finishing projects that we began months ago. Wow, okay, I think I'm done. Yay, that's a small win for a Monday. Couch, side face, part one is in. And we started to see the home take shape. We had electricity. We have everything wired up. I'll touch this. The lights turn on. We had a water tank and hot water. Oh, that's hot. Oh, yeah, that feels good. We finished our shower. We laid flooring. We put in our couch. 
Wow. And 12 grueling months later, we had a home. An actual home we built with our four hands. While we were building the bus, it felt like a project that would never end. And now that I look back on that time, it was all just the blink of an eye, a chapter in our lives. I don't regret the amount of tears shed, the dumb fights, the absolute pure panic, decision fatigue, and literal blood, because it was a growing year, a year we worked one step closer to achieving our dreams. We did it. Did it. Did it. We're struggling through this. That's what we're doing. You did it. Did it. We did that. We did the thing. We're doing it. I'm doing it. Should we do it? I'm doing it. I did it. <laughs> did it. Next step in our story, figuring out how to downsize years of our lives into a small storage unit and the bus. We're 12 hours from hitting the road and it's kind of chaotic, but we'll save that story for another time. If you made it this far in the video, wow, thank you so much for watching. Please do consider subscribing because we pour our heart and soul into these videos and it means more than you know. I will leave it at that, but thank you. Peace and snuggles. <laughs> Whoa, we'll keep brainstorming.